This episode of the Intrepid Podcast is sponsored by Ground News. More on them later. I have come unprepared for this episode of the Intrepid Podcast. And uh, to be honest, to be absolutely honest, I am yet to recover my voice because I have just been under the weather for the past few days uh, since this, re- I mean, uh, prior to this recording. And uh, yeah. Uh, if you notice, I'm a bit husky and all that. This is not my uh, usual voice. I really wish I, I really wish it is, but it is what it is. Anyway, uh, I am here to uh, do an unedited uh, episode of the Intrepid Podcast because if on last episode it's a can of worms, it has been opened. It became a shit show, and it's now a fucking dumpster fire. So, if you want to know what is going on, or basically what are my own personal thoughts about this, TLDR, it still remains the same, but it's just that with anti-Semitism and Islamophobia on the fucking rise, yeah, it's... It's just, uh, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And, uh, yeah. We just have to, uh, deal with this on the fucking fly. So, with that out of the way, let's get on with the intro. Let's start the show. I am Ian Trignon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, and welcome to another episode of the Intrepid Podcast. Now, uh, if you haven't listened to episode 7, which is basically my uh, my special episode on the Israel-Hamas war, I highly recommend you uh, listen to that first before this, um, before this episode. This is episode 8. Because uh, I may or may not uh, uh, li- um, mention some of the things that I have already uh, uh, I have already talked about in the previous episode. So I highly recommend you wa- uh, listen to episode seven for uh, additional context. But the TLDR is this. For thousands of years, the Jewish people have been in, uh, inhabiting the land which we now call the Levant. But then again, the Roman. Uh, but then again, uh, invaders came and came and gone. First, it was the Assyrians, and then the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and then the Romans. Uh, uh, basically, uh, threw them out of their lands. And uh, the Jewish people became a diaspora for the past few centuries. Then, uh, Christianized Rome, uh, <clears throat> Christian Christianized Rome, basically uh, inhabited uh, the Holy Land. Then, the Islamists came. So uh, you have uh, the Ayyubids, the Mamluks, uh, and then. The, the Ottomans. Then after that, uh, after the Ottoman Empire fell in World War One, basically the the area called the Fertile Crescent, basically Mesopotamia and the Levant, was uh, divided by the British and the French via the Sykes-Picot Agreement and the Balfour Declaration, uh, basically uh, promising the Jewish people a national home for them. Which basically pissed off the Arabs. So that's uh, the TLDR on that. And then World War II happened, the Holocaust. And after the Holocaust, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, nations have this obligation to uh, 
let the Jews settle uh, to the Levant, especially in the area which is uh, surrounding Jerusalem. And then 1948 came, the, the British, uh, the Brits uh, left uh, what was then mandatory Palestine and then the UN partitioned it. Uh, and you know, the rest is history. So uh, you, you can basically, uh, you can basically tell anyone who is who has a uh, some uh, emotional investment on this uh, on this issue that uh, they would uh, they they can start with uh, 1948 in the, uh, if if you know what I mean. So basically that basically that's TLDR of uh, the previous episode. Now now that we have tackled that, and now that we have uh. Uh, as of this recording, there are already over 10,000 Palestinians who have been killed by uh, Israeli air airstrikes. Be, uh, due to uh, a lot of factors, not just because, uh, not just because uh, the Israelis have this right to defend themselves, but also because Hamas. Uh, are preventing uh, allegedly preventing um, Palestinians in Gaza City to uh, evacuate to the south as the Israeli forces have uh, urged them to do so. So, and uh, aside from that, you have uh, uh, the ubiquitous uh, the ubiquitous uh, uh, how do I say this? The ubiquitous intent of Hamas to use uh, civilians as human shields and what have you. I'm not here to uh, accuse anything. I'm just here to comment that uh, because war is hell, it's uh, it's just devastating that uh, it's not stopping. It's not fucking stopping. And the repercussions of what's happening in the Levant is felt right across the damn world it's so uh it's so vast it's so widespread that even even here in the philippines uh when war broke out last october a lot of um should i say leftist um organizations or those who are leaning to the left of the political spectrum globally have protested in support of the Palestinian people. We cannot say that these people are supporting Hamas. I am not accusing them of that. But uh, there are still people of goodwill who, who have the best intentions of freeing Palestine. But, uh, what they have been uh, thinking about is freeing Palestine from Hamas. Because Hamas, uh, for some of these people, are taking the Palestinian, uh, the, uh, the Palestinian people rather, of Gaza, or the Gazans, hostages. It's not just the hostages that they took from Israel. That they are taking hostage. It's a uh, no, uh, more than two million people in that strip of land between Israel and e Egypt and the Mediterranean Sea. So, uh, th that's just what I've been reading, listening, and uh, uh, knowing for the past month, actually, because it's coming up to actually. I've been recording I'm recording this on the 7th of November w exactly 1 month to the day that Hamas attacked Israel southern Israel which the international community has actually conde condemned for uh to be uh to be fair because uh yeah uh, as I said in the pre in the previous podcast episode, 
I am pro civilians here. So it breaks my heart, honestly, to uh to see now oh now over uh twelve th- more or less twelve thousand people, innocent civilians on both sides killed just because of ideological differences between the Jewish state of Israel and the Arab state of Palestine. So, it's it's really tragic. Very, very tragic. And as I said early, earlier, <clears throat> sorry again, uh, because I've, uh, as I said, I'm under the weather, I'm still recovering, and yet I have to record this. So, it is what it is. Anyway, uh, as I was saying earlier, the repercussions that uh, the repercussions uh, that uh, I mean the repercussions of this war in the Levant has spread across the world, not just in Europe, not just in the Arab world, but it also spread throughout areas like the United States, Canada, Australia, and even here in the Philippines. Even though, uh, honestly, as of late, it has died down. But then again, there are so there is still social media stuff that I've been reading about. Uh, that some of them are saying free Palestine. There's some some are saying free Palestine from Hamas. There are some of them who said uh, the Philippines stands with Israel and all that shit. Honestly, I really don't want to talk about that because, uh, as I said, it has already been a can of worms. But here's the thing. Innocent people will die because of this war. Not just because of the, not just because of the bombs, not just because of the bullets, but also because of the utter hate, utter hate that uh, both sides of this issue pro-Israel camp and the pro-Palestine camp have been spewing at each other. I am not saying that all of those pro-Israel prote- uh, protesters are Zionists or all of are, are pro-Zion- uh, pro-Zionism or pro-Zionists or uh, the, pro-Pale- the pro-Palestine camp are uh, siding Hamas. By all means, it's not that. Uh, it's not that. And uh, to the credit of some Palestine, pro-Palestine protesters, they have, uh, especially in Australia, they have uh, condemned the the anti-Semitic slogan "Gas the Jews," which was uh, shouted by some people who uh, stormed the Sydney Opera House when it was uh, lighted with the national colors of Israel. So uh yeah that's that. But then again in another commonwealth nation in the United Kingdom there is this rising tension between uh military veterans and pro-Palestine protesters because as of this recording it's the 7th of November 2023 this coming Saturday November 11 is Armistice Day when in which uh nations who have uh who have uh fought in world war 1 would commemorate the end of that war on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 but then again uh for practical purposes the brits celebrate uh this anniversary on the second Sunday of November, which they call Remembrance Sunday. From what I have been watching and listening at this point, uh, there is this tension between uh, military veterans and uh, pro-Palestine supporters in which uh, the, the latter are uh, just wanted to protest uh, willy-nilly and that uh and they are basically spewing out all of their uh 
all of their slogans for all of London and of other places, but it's more focused on London because uh, the main celebration of Remembrance Sunday is in London, uh, in the UK, of course. And uh, a lot of people have been complaining that if if this goes on, it might uh, they have this fear that uh, these pro-Palestine protesters might disturb or uh, uh, might disturb the solemn uh, ceremonies that happen on November 11th or Remembrance Sunday. Either way, uh, there's a two-minute silence and these protesters might break that silence in remembrance of uh of uh, the fallen of not just World War One but also World War Two, Korea, the Falklands, and even uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. Basically, everyone who has uh, has died in uh, in combat for crown and country, if you know what I mean. But across the pond in the United States, protests. For Israel and Palestine have gone fucking haywire because uh, pro-Palestinian protesters have uh, reached the White House. Well, not really inside the White House, but they are in the White House fence. They're trying to climb it. I am not sure, but it's really uh, concerning to be uh, to be completely honest with you because it's. Um, it's dividing a nation which we Filipinos call a very st- strong ally even though uh they have their uh they have their bouts of colonial mentality still uh still in their uh, mindset or in their psyche but then again it's just uh tragic that uh uh Anti-Semitism and Islamophobia has been on the rise in both in uh, in the United States. Uh, just in just a few days before a few days before uh, U.S. President Joe Biden uh, visited Israel, uh, a Palestinian boy was stabbed to death by a by a, by the landlord of his mother. Just because he was Palestinian, because of the news. And then, on the other side of things, there's this synagogue uh, president or synagogue leader who was also stabbed to death. So this is a Jewish woman who has been stabbed to death. death. And just in, an elderly Jewish man died after he was allegedly attacked at a pro-Palestine demonstration in fucking LA, Los Angeles. New sources say he was holding an Israeli flag while in the middle of pro-Palestine demonstrations when he was struck on the head with a megaphone which caused him to fall and hit his head on the ground. And when I, and uh, in speaking of ground, I would just like to tell you that we have a sponsor for this episode of the Intrepid Podcast. Now, as you may have heard on episode 7, that's the previous episode, I have embraced the life of a news writer and a freelance journalist at this point of my career. Honestly, it has its challenges, but it is also liberating because I also believe, as the guy upstairs said, the truth shall set you free. Now, aside from social media, I currently work for a news site, and I make sure that I would keep it balanced, even if there are biases when it comes to very sensitive issues such as insert topic here. Basically, for this episode, it's the Israel-Hamas war, again. But as a news writer, I also incorporate my interest in history to make it investigative as much as possible, especially for news stories that may have been overlooked or underreported by the big guys in the media industry. And for that, one of the tools that I, that I use both at work and in my research for social media content is the sponsor for today's video for the, for this today for today's episode rather ground news <laughs> and i just wanted to uh go out of character because i have this general script 
for this ad. And uh, sorry for that. Again, this is a, an unedited, hopefully unedited uh, episode of the Intrepid Podcast. Now, Ground News is a website and app that gathers from around news rather from around 50,000 sources globally and puts related articles in one place so you can easily compare coverage. It lets you see the story behind the story using data-driven analysis that looks at things like political bias, reliability, and ownership of news outlets, which is why I was convinced to sponsor them for this video. For example, I use Ground News not only as a tool to make better news reports and stories on my end, but it also helps me personally identify the original article since a majority of them are just copy-pastes of articles from the Associated Press, Reuters, Agence France Presse, etc., as well as analyze where these news sites are coming from. Now, for a more local context, when it comes to news items coming from the Philippines or at least tackles the Philippines, I am not surprised at all that Rappler is left-leaning in the ground news left-right spectrum, but what I am surprised is that GMA, Inquirer, Manila Bulletin, and Philstar Global, that's the Philippine, Sc- Philippine Star, lean to the left while ABS-CBN and the Manila Times lean to the right. But then again, these news sites may not be as exposed as it is on ground news at this point, so I do look forward to seeing these leans shift or change pretty soon. Now, as I said earlier, there uh, one, of the, one of the topics or stories that ground news uh uh gathered is this uh story or news story of an elderly Jewish man who died after he was attacked at a pro Palestine demonstration in Los Angeles. Now here you can see a comparison of what news sources have been emphasizing and what they have left out and I have been I will provide a video for the YouTube version about the whole thing. But for the sake of those who are listening on Spotify I would basically uh, detail it for you. Now, Ground News provides users with how many news sources covered the story, which site reported it with a left or right lean, and how much of it leaned to the left or right or at the center. You can also click or tap the icon of the news site to read the articles for yourself. Yes, there is also a mobile app for you to read Ground News on the go. I have downloaded it on my phone, so uh, I'm all covered there. But personally, my favorite feature of Ground News is that each story consists of charts and breakdowns gauging on factuality, ownership, and which site broke the news first and how broad it has been reported across the world. Now, you can choose from over 150,000 topics, locations, and people to follow so that you can easily track them on the My Feed tab. You can also check your news bias via a personalized dashboard to track your reading habits. Now, another great feature of Ground News is its blind spot feature, where you can view news reports and stories that left or right leaning sites and people may have missed out on. At the end of the day, as someone somehow involved in media production and engagement, it is of utmost importance for everyone to have a balanced view, view of things, especially in this digital age where news practices have been put to the ultimate test. Now, what's the best part, you might ask? You can access all of these if you create a Ground News account or download the app for free. Yes, you heard it right. It's absolutely free. But if you want to upgrade, if you rather upgrade to one of their premium, premium subscription options, you will get access to extra features that would give you a greater perspective on the story behind the story beyond the basic stuff. So, if you want to know more about news stories behind the clutter, sign up today at check.ground.news slash intrepidian. That's check.ground.news slash intrepidian. The link is also in the YouTube description and the Spotify show notes. And if you sign up on that link, you would get 15%, 1-5% of your ground off, rather, of your ground news subscription. Again, that's check.ground.news slash intrepidian to get 15% off of your Ground News subscription. I would like to tell you that it is my honor to share that Ground News is the very first sponsor of IJR Productions, of this uh, 
of this social media thing that I've been doing. So thank you very much to the people behind Ground News, not only because of the sponsorship, but also because it helps me monitor news sources much more efficiently. Now, back to the topic. Okay, so we have that, protests all over the world, and it's not abating. What's next? Honestly, I don't know. I really don't know. I just hope to everything that is holy that this war would not escalate or expand to other areas. That for some reason Hezbollah would not uh, involve themselves in this because if they did, God help us. Because, as you know, both Hamas and Hezbollah are both financially and morally or logistically supported by Iran. And Iran has been a very uh, staunch enemy of Israel f- ever since. Uh, ever since the Islamic Republic threw out or uh, deposed the Shah in the 1970s, or deposed the uh, the Iranian monarchy in the 1970s. And uh, basically, Iran is the odd one out in the Islamic world because uh, all of their neighbors have been trying to normalize their uh, their relations with Israel, with Sa- with the one with Saudi Arabia, just about to uh, just about to get normalized. But then again, uh, Hamas attacked and that was derailed. So yeah, it's it's very it's very uh, tragic that that happened. Anyway, um, I think that's all that I wanted to talk about at this point in this up uh, in this episode of the the Intrepid Podcast. I really wanted to pray for the peace in the Middle East, especially because I have, uh, I have at least one per uh, one person who I may, whom I considered a close contact. He just happened to be a Franciscan uh, deacon at this point. He may be ordained a priest in the in the future, but right now he is a deacon. But basically, uh, I have I have uh, given him a shout out in the previous uh, in the previous uh, episode, so that's that. But I I don't want to read or uh, pray aloud that this uh, this episode because uh, that might mean I have to edit it uh, much more. I end with this uh, thought. Jerusalem means the city of peace. It's uh, it's basically uh, uh, based on the word salam or shalom, whatever it is. If you're in Hebrew, it's uh, Shalom. In Arabic, it's Salam. Basically, Jerusalem is the city of peace, especially the old city, which honestly I just wanted to go to uh, sometime in my life. If and only if the guns fall silent. Because For centuries and even millennia, Jerusalem has not been a city of peace. And I just hope in the future it does. And it does live up to its name. Because right now, peace can never never be found in Jerusalem or in any, any other part of 
what Abrahamic believers call the Holy Land. So, I enjoin those who pray and those who believe that there may be peace, that may there be justice and peace in this stretch of land in the Eastern Mediterranean. And so with that, I end today's podcast. I would absolutely like to thank you all for uh, listening, even though this is very much a spontaneous uh, recording of the Intepid podcast. Now, the recording for this episode would be available on YouTube and Spotify with further plans to, sp- to expand to other platforms. So please make sure to check out for that. All of the materials uh, I have referenced for this episode would be listed in this recording's uh, description if you're on YouTube and also in the Spotify show notes. And if you think there are things that I might not have included in this recording or if you want to have your say about the matter, please feel free to leave your comment uh, them in the comments below if applicable. And also before, before you go, please make sure to uh, follow me as well on all of my socials. I'm in I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter slash X, whatever it is, and uh here on YouTube. Uh honestly. Um obviously. Uh so uh please make sure as well to like this video and share this around. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to my channel in and Reunion and ring the notification bell by selecting all so you would you wouldn't miss out with whatever future future content I may create. Please also follow me along as well on Spotify for mo- more podcast episodes so that you can listen to this on the go you, you don't and you don't have to basically watch a 30 to 60 minute video of a still screen and just uh audio. Okay? So you have that option. Again, I'm on my uh, I am I have my socials so that I have on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, I don't have a TikTok. I'm not intending to have a TikTok. It's still, it's still a no for me. But uh, these three platforms plus Spotify and, uh, and uh, and YouTube also on Strava because I also cycle. So uh, all of the handles for all of my socials is called is uh, Intrepid Ian Renyon. It's also on uh, the YouTube description and the Spotify show notes. So you can check that out. Copy or copy or click the link there so that you can access my other uh, stuff on social media. So, with all that said, this is Intrepid and Reunion reminding you to at all times, now more than ever, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, be kind to yourself and to each other, and please pray for peace. Not, not just in the Holy Land, but throughout the world. And in our hearts too. And as always, thank you for tuning in. From here in Intrepid HQ, see you next time for another talk here on the Intrepid Podcast. Ian out.